Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're going to be looking at the wonderful Jazz Club Modular, set 10312, uh, giving it a bit of a review, adding some amendments, as always, uh, and then placing it in Brick Nottingham. Cool, let's get started. <laughs> Well, before we go inside and look at the wonderful goings on inside our jazz club, Pizzeria and Taylor, I think it's worth focusing on the front perspective because that's what most people are going to be looking at most of the time. Uh, maybe not in my city with the limited space that's available for this thing, so it'll probably be pointing in a rather strange angle uh, up there. But anyway, uh, and I think the first thing uh, to mention is the kind of proportions of each of the buildings. I think they work really well. We've got this one over three stories, which is taking up most of the width, uh, but it's suitably tall for that width. And I think it looks rather chunky and fantastic uh, with that emphasis on the height being echoed by these tall windows in the middle and that vertical sign. And then even more interest with the marquee jutting out at this pleasing 45 degree angle. I like that very much. Uh, then we've got the pizzeria slightly set back and obviously smaller. Uh, uh, but the light yellow, I think, really makes it pop and looks a bit bigger than perhaps it really is. And doing that over two stories makes it look like the smaller part, but just as interesting. It kind of makes you want to look into it more, if you ask me. Uh, and those wonderful colours uh, continue over the first half. I think they've been really wisely chosen. Dark Azure is one of my favourite colours, uh, but it has to be used sparingly. So they've used it just on the ground floor here, and doesn't it pop? I mean, it really looks inviting, and you just want to go through that door and see what's on the inside. Uh, and then you've got it continue just a little bit above the marquee uh, with the sort of Art Deco styling. So I think that looks great. Now, if they'd done the whole building in that, it would have been an absolute mess. So moving to the more sort of uh, muted contrast colour of dark red, I think is really, really suitable. It kind of looks old, established, but still very bright and colourful. And the accent colour of this light bluish grey really sets it off. So I'm very happy with this front vista. Uh, now we've got some really interesting new pieces in these two by six tiles, one saying jazz and one saying club. Uh, that seems a bit of a cop-out, if you ask me, just doing new printed tiles to get around what would be a complicated issue. I was kind of thinking we'd have a really 3D sign here, maybe with a big saxophone or something like that that was brick-built. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, less so with these 2 by 6 tiles, because, uh, well, with all the detail on them, they'd have to either be printed or stickered. So live music all night and magic show, I think that's suitable in that... Um, bright flamish yellow orange which is another uh, really bright contrast color uh, and then as if that wasn't enough we've got a really nice poster down here uh, on a bricks on the side uh, build because that's a, a one by four by two panel really uh, with jazz concert every Friday live music with somebody playing the trumpet so I think that looks really really good as well so the front view uh, is fantastic we've even got more new pieces in these one by two uh, round jumper plates, which are very interesting, which allow us to add uh, these quarter tiles on to make some really interesting decor. Uh, and these window frames are very complicated indeed. Uh, and well, quite simple at the same time, so it's a bit weird really. Um, nothing rocket science-y, but it's really quite fun to build uh, such a detailed, intricate build. So we've got the very nice little ledge that's provided by those one by two plates with the what I always think of as guns on them uh, and then uh, other pieces and tiles on the side around the outside to make a very precise looking window both here and for the bigger ones uh, in here so yeah I think it was a really fun build actually I mean I usually enjoy building a modular uh, and this one was definitely no exception uh, now, I really like the colonial kind of look at this with these round pillars in between all of the windows. But if I've got one criticism of the pizza side of things is, well, I don't really know. It's a pizza restaurant. And we've got the Italian flag kind of striping here uh, of the red, white and green. But so what? I mean, that just could be a pattern. It doesn't actually say restaurant anywhere on it or pizza anywhere on it or, well, anything. So it could be a shop or, I don't know, a gelato place, or goodness knows what. Uh, but to contrast with that lack of detail, we've got a little bit here that I just love, um, with the not only 2x2 two two round uh, printed tile of the tailor, established 1932, uh, but also the door that is colour 
matched uh, in that medium lavender color that goes straight to some stairs to go up to the next floor. And I think that's a really good touch and making really good use of our very limited space on this 32 by 32 base plate. So yeah, I think it's a really good uh, start, this front view. I like the hanging baskets with these purple flowers. I think one weakness as well, uh, apart from the signage on there, and maybe this being a bit tame, is this table uh, right out into the street. I think we arguably needed a second one here, or maybe just moving it here. I might still do that. Uh, but also, another new piece that we've got is this umbrella piece in this dark green uh, bright light yellow and red. And for me, that is just a horrible color combination. It kind of works up here, uh, but it really doesn't work on there. I think that's probably the most dingy and horrible umbrella I've ever seen Lego do. So I might be swapping that out as well. Uh, but yeah, really good start. Uh, let's get this thing open and look at all the floors as we go up. Good, good. Well, floor number one is dominated by the jazz club sign that, uh, stays attached to the top of the marquee so uh, it kind of gets in the way of filming uh, but the marquee itself is quite a clever build actually it's a seven by seven kind of square just turned 45 degrees and if you remember your pythagoras theorem then seven squared is 49 seven squared is 49 add two 49s together that's 98 and root 98 is just slightly less than 10 which is why it fits almost perfectly in this 10 long gap here so it's just a whisper of a gap and you can see it can rotate just a tiny bit as a result uh, but i still think that that is a really good feature uh, and a really good use of maths maths is cool kids <laughs> uh, anyway the inside of the jazz club uh, is first of all gone through with this door uh, but also via this ticket booth. And I think the only weakness of that, which I do empathise with having designed my own modulars, is that we haven't got much of a ticket booth on the inside. It's just kind of a shelf where somebody must be standing uh, before the performance. So I think that is a compromise that is acceptable. Uh, then we've got an interesting pattern floor with six chairs on, all pointing towards the stage with glassware and so on on their red tablecloth tables. Uh, and then we've got the band playing there with a saxophone on its stand, uh, a drummer and a bassist. And the bassist is the most interesting of all in that he has a brand new piece, the double bass which is lovely, and I'm almost certain they won't put for sale on bricks and pieces. So, uh, you know, if you want it, you're going to have to get this set. Uh, but also, he's got another hearing aid uh, head, which I think is a really nice thing to add, because we had a female with hearing aid before, uh, and now we've got both. Another new piece is that torso for the band uniform. Uh, so the theme continues with these really nice lamps on the sides. Uh, we've also got uh, a bathroom under the stairs, <laughs> about as small as the one that I did in my mall. Very hard to see. There's no access to that one either. You can just see uh, the beginnings of a sink and the uh, bowl itself. Uh, but it's nice that they included that. Then we've got our walkway through to the pizza side and it's very narrow, three stud wide stairway. But you know, also having designed these things before, it is good to get these things uh, done in as small a footprint as possible. So yeah, I appreciate that as well. Now, the gap between the two bits on the inside, I don't quite get. I mean, it does make them both a little bit more open. I appreciate that. But in a practical sense, I don't really like it because essentially the noises and the smells of, I don't know, kids getting pizza would go into the jazz club and all the noise of the jazz, if you don't like jazz, would be going into the pizza restaurant. So yeah, I think that's a bit odd. Uh, it's kind of necessary in that the pizza guy needs to go out of there and out of the back door in order to get to the wood store for more wood for his pizza uh, wood-fired pizza oven. Uh, so, yeah, I get it in a uh, sort of uh, uh, ergonomic sense, but I think the aesthetic is let down a little bit. I mean, that view is great, but, you know, does it really work? Maybe we don't really mind. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we've got a really great big pizza oven uh, in here. And I was very interested with this build indeed, because as you may know, if you watch my brick calls, I've been trying uh, on a quest to get the best pizza oven pieces possible from all of the pieces over many, many years uh, to make my own in a pizza restaurant that I had planned uh, for the other side of the city. So I think we can still have both. Um, and what did Lego do? Well, they used a really cool curved black 
uh, wheel arch piece uh, that's brand new to this set. So yeah, classic Lego. They kind of cheated uh, and made a brand new piece to do theirs. So I'm very unimpressed uh, because I was hoping that they did something really clever uh, that would make me feel humble. But if you're just going to create a new piece every time you meet, uh, you meet up with a problem, then uh, I've got less sympathy. <laughs> anyway, uh, I like the interior of here. We've got quite a simple counter. We've got an unmade pizza base here with loads of ingredients and a brand new pizza piece, uh, which we've got one spare of, of course, because it's a very small piece. And that's got mozzarella and, well, basil, I suppose, on the uh, top of it. So that's nice, but a bit unnecessary in a way. We've had pizza pieces before. Getting new ones seems a waste uh, of brand new pieces, if you ask me, if you're limited uh, in a set. Oh, we've got some condiments over there. No seating on the inside. Well, there probably wasn't room, so I guess it's more of a takeaway place, which makes the connection between these two less. I mean, I guess patrons can come in here and get pizza and take it back in. Yeah, I guess so. But I'm just wondering about that noise. Uh, also, it is just a pizza place. It's not an Italian restaurant. It's a pizza place. There's no pasta, uh, no carne, no dolce, <laughs> no espresso, nothing. Just pizza. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, a bit underwhelmed at the lack of diversity in there. Uh, but the black and white check floor sets off well. Uh, and I really love that yellow on the inside as well. But still no menus, no signage, nothing to say uh, that this is actually a pizza place. So yeah, a bit lacking still in that. Uh, but the sides are relatively clean. I usually remove these uh, Technic bricks uh, in case mine don't end up next to neighbours. I don't think I need to in this case because I think it will be sandwiched between two. Uh, and that is the ground floor. Uh, an honourable mention to the uh, double base case, which kind of rattles around if you want it on the inside. So yeah, I don't really know what to do with that. But you can wear it on this neck uh, brace piece here uh, to carry uh, the base but then if you want to have it out it doesn't make a whole lot of sense they'd be wearing that but anyway uh, we also get a brand new color of the scooter which I don't think is a delivery person I think that somebody just picked up their own pizza uh, to save some money because uh, otherwise they'd have a uniform on and we've got better delivery people uh, than this uh, but it's nice in this bright green color so I very much approve of that uh, and then just a minor thing that I've changed already is to get rid of these two by twos in black, which underneath things like the lamp and the table. I just hate seeing those tiny chinks of black on the corners shining through. So I've just swapped mine for dark bluish gray. But yeah, a really nice ground floor, I must say. So uh, let's move up to the second floor. All right, well, the second floor is where I start to nitpick and get unrationally bothered about very minor details. But uh, anyway, uh, let's start off with the right where we've got the tailor. Uh, now, he's got his scissors. He's got his sewing machine. He's got all of his cloth on rolls, a mannequin, uh, a nice fire that continues up uh, that chimney breast on the outside. And it's quite a small room but it's absolutely elegant and perfect. And they've continued that color coding on the door. So this side I've got no problem with whatsoever. It is almost perfect. Uh, I have got one gripe though, which is the way this was built. I mean, obviously you want the yellow brick continuing on one half and the red brick continuing on the other. But the way they did that was joining the two sections together with Technic pins on one by one Technic bricks. And you can see one there. So it's still visible on the outside, but it also has the added uh, issue that essentially these aren't very well connected. I mean, at the very end, I really don't understand why they didn't put some sort of shared plate in grey because it wouldn't show here in grey just to link them together a bit more firmly at the bottom because every time you lift it off it does move and however well you push those uh, friction Technic pins together it doesn't quite stay uh, together as it might. And I really like these balcony bits here, uh, the windows and the colour contrast of that uh, uh, medium nougat colour in there. I like the hanging baskets as I mentioned earlier so that's good. Here we've got uh, some interesting stained glass windows making the building look even more old uh, and established I think kind of like an old music hall or something like that and then these tall ones behind the sign. Very clean side which I always like even though it's going to get covered up and we do have some detail on the back which is good with some windows here and this nice little balcony area at the middle. So I like the different style of windows on both halves and I like that little bit of uh, well interest and change in shape uh, that makes the entire back not one great big flat scene. Uh, so then the 
middle bit with the corridor where we've got the stairs coming up from below uh, and then another flight going up another level another one three wide now this one doesn't have a handrail so it's a bit precarious so they haven't bothered uh, fixing that but you know i can kind of forgive them that uh, and then we've got the office for the owner of the jazz club now before we get in there you'll see the door is there that door's there that door's there oh oh well that is a complete mess isn't it uh, a complete jumble of doors all opening into the same space so i kind of think they could have moved this one say along to here or something like that just so there wasn't too much of a clash all at one end but yeah minor gripe uh, I did you did warn you. <laughs> so this area is right over that wonderful triangular uh, stage in the corner of the floor below. So you can get a great view over it. Now, why that would be directly linked again for sound pollution to somebody's office where they might be having private meetings or something like that. I don't know. Even if she is a massive jazz fan, maybe it doesn't matter if they're only doing shows on a Friday night. Uh, but we've got a really nice corner desk, old style telephone. Uh, a nice desk lamp and a gramophone with a new print of a record. Again, we've had old ones of that, so I don't know if that was a waste of a new printed part when we could have had a more uh, amazing sign at the front. Uh, and then a very, very small two by two picture on a wall, which I think is so small it looks a bit silly in a way. Uh, so I'd have made that a lot bigger, I think. Uh, but otherwise, it's a functional office. Would this have been better? as a viewing gallery uh, for more people who are paying customers. I think it might have been. Uh, but my biggest gripe is the fact that, if you remember, we accessed all of this from the stairs to the tailor, uh, from the tailor door uh, that was that uh, lavender one. So to get to her office, she has to go out of the front door of the jazz club, round the corner, back in the door and up the stairs, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, again, from designing these things, I know that having two stairs up in one, it just seems like a massive waste of space. So I kind of get it, but maybe there should have just been a sign at the bottom with an interconnecting door or two doors at the bottom, and then uh, the purple one continuing up here. I don't know, but essentially, yeah, it's kind of got that thing that Assembly Square suffered from. <laughs> we have to go through one business to get to another. Uh, but I do like it. It's very pretty. Uh, and none of those things are going to ruin it for me. So, awesome. Let's move another floor up. Now, the next floor is in two sections, which makes a lot of sense. So I like that. The main building continuing on the main one. And we've got the top of the stairs here with a nice banister this time so no one can fall down it. And a ladder up to what will be a trap door on the very top roof. So that makes sense. Uh, then we've got a door out here which goes to the outdoor area on the flat roof, which also makes sense. So then all that remains is this door going in here to the main room, which, while we're at this angle, has got a much better, a much more relevant kind of double crotchet or quarter note uh, kind of motif to uh, the art piece that's four by four, a lot better sized. I think you'll agree. So I really like that one. It's much better than the other. Uh, but that is on the wall of this dressing room with a nice big sort of armoire with mirror and those uh, lights all around the outside, hairbrush and all the rest of it for our singer to get ready, who is another minifigure with new pieces, that torso and dress piece. Uh, incidentally, the manager has a new face, which just seemed a complete waste, given it's uh, another sort of <laughs> kind of neutral uh, expression, if you ask me. Uh, but anyway, uh, and then we've got a lady magician whose torso is also a new print, uh, but it's relatively standard as well, just kind of being uh, a, a white shirt with black jacket. Oh no, I've just killed a rabbit. <laughs> well, uh, so we've got some uh, notes for the singer to practice her singing. We've got a nice uh, couch there for relaxing on. We've got some ribbons and flowers and that uh, dead rabbit for uh, magic tricks for our magician uh, who follows, if you remember, uh, the singer uh, on that marquee notice. Uh, and the insides of these windows are really pretty as well. So yeah, I do like this floor. Now we've got the same gripe, of course, in that to access this stairway right on the ground floor, we had to go into the door of the tailors, didn't we? And up two flights of stairs to get to the dressing room. So if we had that double link on the ground floor, this would also link with the jazz club itself, which makes a lot more sense because you wouldn't want to 
carry your base all the way up here, then bring it back down again, and then out onto the street, then back in, uh, or even when you've uh, warmed up your vocal cords. You wouldn't want to go outside again in the cold. So yeah, I really like that picture. I wish we had a duplicate on the floor below. I like the armoire, I like the space, but not the access so much. We've got more of those nice windows on the back, more of the nice stained glass on the front. This uh, kind of, what is that? It's a windscreen piece, yeah, in grey. There's a really good arch there, just attached with studs on the side. Uh, so yeah, a really nice bit there. Uh, then the flat piece of roof that goes on top of our pizza restaurant. Uh, we've got a greenhouse which is very nice with some plants growing of all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Um, we have got gaps here, here and here, uh, and on the front there's no doors. This is all completely open, so I'm not a great fan of that build in a way. It looks good from a distance and it looks good from the side, uh, but yeah, it's kind of a bit leaky, which is the point of a greenhouse. And we've seen other greenhouse builds in friend sets and even that um, uh, farm one that's uh, out last year that possibly are better uh, a bit less black and a bit more glass. Uh, but I really like the top of the chimney. That is a really good build. And there's a bit of ornate white uh, kind of brickwork on the top of there as well. So yeah, I like it. Uh, again, we've got the access issue. Uh, now, who does this belong to? I mean, quite frankly, you've got access from the street, <laughs> so anyone can get up there. Uh, does it belong to the tailor? Does it belong to the jazz club owner? We just don't know. But um, anyway, there is that flat piece of roof that goes there. And we may as well do this while we're here. Uh, this flat piece of roof, which has the ornate bit for the main building with some upside down bricks in there, sort of clever building technique, which looks very presentable indeed from the front. I like that a great deal. Uh, the hatch that's at the top of that ladder, a couple of steps down, and then, yay, a little squirrel on his little dead leaf uh, squirrel nest. Now, I think he'd go somewhere a bit more secluded than this, to be fair, because it's right out in the open. So I'll probably keep this little micro build uh, and put it somewhere else in my city, but I'm not sure it's going to last in there. But I agree they needed something, uh, because otherwise it would have been really flat and boring. So I'm glad they added that detail very much. Cool, so let's build this all back together. Uh, then we can give it our final point score our final verdict, uh, and then I can start telling you how I'm going to make it even better, in my view. <laughs> You'll have to let me know what you think. Well, overall, I think you can tell that I really like this modular. It is really interesting. It's got very good building techniques. It was fun to build, uh, interesting colours, interesting pieces. So I very much like it, and I'm looking forward to having it in Brick Nottingham. Uh, but before I give you my verdict, I think we do need to talk about price. Uh, this is £200 or 230 US dollars or 230 euros, which seems a lot. Uh, but it's the way that all Lego sets seem to be going at the moment, up, up, up and away. Uh, now, in this case, you do get 2,899 pieces, which is quite a lot. So I think the ratio is about right, albeit a lot of them are very small pieces like this and the one by one tiles on the outside and in the mosaics and stuff. Um, but there are eight minifigures as well, quite a few printed pieces. Yeah, I think it's just about the right price. <laughs> as always, it could always be a bit cheaper, let's face it. Uh, but I think overall, my view is, although I love it and I'm looking forward to having it in my city, is that this is just a little bit safe. Uh, I always think they need a bit more flourish uh, and a bit more excitement. I think back to when I built something like the detective's office and I was just thoroughly impressed and reopening it to sort of look at the insides and how clever it was in certain areas. And the printed pieces I thought were absolutely brilliant. Now in this one, they're necessary and here, here and here, I think they're great. But this is a real cop out if you ask me. Uh, the pizza oven using a new piece is a bit of a cop out, but not so bad. But the absolute absence of any signage on the front of this side to let you even know what this business is just seems like a mistake to me. Uh, that squirrel on the top, though, very good fun, is just dressing up a very plain roof. Uh, the uh, bit here maybe is a bit too open, so... Uh, and then there's the layout problems on the inside. So I do like it. I do think in certain areas they really could have made this sign, for example, uh, a lot more interesting and they've really missed a trick there. Uh, it's an opportunity gone begging, uh, but uh, I do like it. So I think my final score is going to be brrr, 8 out of 10. I like it, but could be better. 
So with that in mind, I figured that I might want to do some of my own improvements. And one is, well, definitely I need to do something to this 3D sign. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what LEGO actually allow you to buy on bricks and pieces. Often the printed tiles they do allow you to buy after a couple of months and they've made enough of these to sell around the world. So I'm hoping I can make this sign three-sided and maybe a bit bigger and stick out a bit further. And then it can say Jazz Club on this side and on this side, as well as on the front. Because especially in my city, I think you're going to have to be able to see this coming down the street or up the street, as well as, well, opposite. In a way, that's the least useful uh, direction for it to me. So what I'm planning to do is actually get, well, more of these pieces and have it kind of like that, like that, and like that, all at the same time. Uh, and with that in mind, I've kind of gone ahead and experimented with the pieces that I already have in my collection uh, and I can show you roughly well one of the options that I'm thinking of doing and it's just to very simply replace these kind of fancy pieces uh, on the inside of this build with some uh, bricks with studs on the side and then when I put this bit back in the middle I can also add some similar builds. These are done with sort of smaller pieces, but you get the idea to that side and to that side, and then it makes it a lot more interesting. Now you'd have to imagine that all three sides say Jazz Club, of course, and it might be the case that I use these uh, gun pieces again, which are those modified plates with the kind of two pointy guns on the side, uh, on this one and on this one. So we've got uh, that detail on these back sides as well. But you get the idea, and then I'd have to mount another one of these sausages on the back. But even though that isn't a brick-built 3D saxophone, I think that's a lot more interesting. And it would definitely look better in my city when you're looking from this direction, and you can still say it, uh, see it saying Jazz Club. So yeah, that is an improvement that I'm definitely going to be doing. It's just a matter of those pieces becoming available. Hmm, fingers crossed. Uh, another thing to get the outside looking a bit more interesting and that lack of saxophones uh, sorted is just to modify these Art Deco pieces. So I'm just going to remove the quarter gold tiles and add saxophones uh, with a modified tile with clip on just so we've got a bit more detail because I, like most people, probably think of the saxophone when uh, thinking about this sort of a place. So I think it's very iconic sort of um, thing to have on the outside. So maybe that above both sides is a little bit of that 3D sign that we're missing. And if I just get them both straight, I think they'll look rather good. So do tell me what you think of that. And I just happen to have two of those knocking around anyway. So yeah, I think that is a nice little improvement. Uh, now I've liberated some of these gold quarter tiles as well. I thought I'd try and improve the back because the back is very plain. Now this is often the case, of course, uh, but we have tried here with this balcony, uh, this recess bit here, all these windows and the windows being different on that side, but there's still a great big expanse of just whoa, flat wall. So I want to do something better with that. Uh, and what I've created is this jazz sign. Now I need that quarter tile that I just pinched for the last bit of it. Yay, so we've got J-A-Z-Z, -Z. and it's quite sort of basic, but at least it will be visible from the back perspective, which will probably be one of the standing holes. So I'm going to use these bricks to swap out one of these 1x6s in here and have that mounted on there with the dark red border continuing the colour from the floor above. So it just breaks up that large expanse of all. I don't think it's the best build ever, but um, yeah, still an improvement. So I'm going to do that, uh, and then we can try and fix the pizzeria. Okay, well, just sign on, and I think that's looking pretty good, actually. Definitely better than the blank wall that was there before. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to be sending it into Lego Ideas or anything like that, but um, yeah, I think that's an improvement. Uh, so I've added some more modified bricks over on this side uh, and moved this 
uh, what must be a ventilation brick down a little bit to give us some space for some signage. Uh, I'm going to be adding some to the front as well, don't worry, but I thought I'd add extra ones that I've got to the back because I've got two sticker sheets from the set 79104, the Shell Razor Street Chase from 2013, and that is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle set, so obviously it features pizzas because I want to keep the City Pizza brand for my other pizza restaurant that I'll be doing well one day. So I'm going to use the stickers that were on that pizza van in that set and they say Antonio's Pizzarama so that can be the name of this place and look it does pizza by the slice so I can add that one to there and then I can also add these round ones where it's got Antonio giving us the wink on either side. I think that means that it looks pretty good from the back and we know what this business is and then I can do the same from the inside so let's just pop that over there because I've done the ones with studs on both sides so that when you walk into here means you know exactly where oh, you are now for most people you won't see that ever again but anyway I like it so that can stay and because those sticker sheets were very generous I've actually got two more copies of these so I can have them as adverts around the city for this place so that makes a lot of sense indeed and at this stage you might be thinking well why on earth are you not putting any of these on the outside wasn't that your main problem with this build and well it was but I really like 3D signs uh, as a lot of you may know so I decided to go even further than that and echo something in this a bright light yellow colour that came from a Duplo set, uh, namely uh, set 10834 Pizzeria. And that is dun, 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 a massive 3D pizza. Yes, in exactly the right colour palette uh, with the red and the green and the white of these actual pizza pizzas. Uh, shown up as well so I just thought that was absolutely perfect now if you tell me when you see this jazz club now with its multi-sided sign these saxophones you couldn't mistake that uh, but you also now couldn't mistake what is for sale in this place well yep it's pizza <laughs> so I think that is a great improvement and well it's a great way of using that difficult to use piece uh, it's quite a, a difficult way to attach it on the back uh, just because of that Duplo connection. But um, yeah, I think it's worked rather well. Uh, and it still separates in the usual way. So no problem there. Essentially, it's just clipped to these uh, railings here. So I think both of those improvements for the Pizzeria Place are even better than the ones for the Jazz Club. But do, as ever, let me know what you think. Uh, now, the last amendment I want to do is to the roof. Uh, and basically, it's to move... Mr. Squirrel out of the way and give him somewhere else to live in my city and instead replace that scene with this uh, not coordinated uh, in exactly this order but essentially a band uh, with all their instruments rocking out uh, for their rehearsal on top of a roof. I've been dying to find a flat roof that's about the right size and shape eh? Eh? to do this scene and this one is perfect. So this kind of echoes from history uh, uh, where the Beatles did their final concert ever, uh, as depicted in the film Let It Be, uh, in January 1969. Uh, also in 1987, U2 did a similar thing for their video for Where the Streets Have No Name. Uh, so there's quite a lot of history of this. So I've got basically, well, we have to think of a name for this band. I'm thinking of calling it the series minifigures <laughs> or something like that, because these are all uh, series minifigures. We've got here uh, the Rocker Girl from Series 7 with her wonderful face paint and, and echoed on her guitar. We've got this guy who is the uh, rock star from Series 12, uh, the pop star from Series 2, uh, the punk rocker from Series 4. And here on drums with two uh, magic wands <laughs> is the video game guy from Series 12. And I love this uh, construction for a drum kit with cymbals. Uh, hi-hat and all these drums all surrounding him. He has to be quite high for it to kind of work so his chair is very high up but I still think that looks really good and the bass drum has got a glow-in-the-dark uh, dish piece on it that came with the set 9467 Ghost Train 
a Monster Fighter set from 2012. So that will really glow under the lights of my Lego room. So essentially, I just need to take all of this off, including these two massive oversized speakers, uh, arrange it as a scene on top of my roof, and uh, then I can put the whole lot in my city, Brick Nottingham. Well, better signage, front and back, I think you'll agree. Uh, but the whole scene is capped off with a real feature now on the roof. The series minifigures, band in action. And I really like that, especially the punk rocker right on the edge, peering over at what must be a gathering crowd on the street. He hopes. <laughs> Maybe they'll secure their contract. Yes, it's quite a Lego city thing to do, really, this. Not very realistic, uh, but uh, quite noisy for the neighbours. <laughs> but it does make great use of the space and shows off some wonderful figures and pieces and micro builds in that drum kit. And that face is just going to glow in my Lego room. So I'm looking forward to that a great deal. Cool. So let's get this wonderful modular that's made even better, I think, uh, into Brick Nottingham. Well, a lot of you are not going to like where I've put this because, yep, I've got it facing the wall, <laughs> largely, just because we're running out of room for all these things in my city. Uh, maybe I should have the band facing backwards so at least we can enjoy them on the roof. Uh, but that's why I was so keen to have these signs on the back and make that look interesting. And you can see I've paved all of the backdrop as well. Uh, so it kind of links up with the back door of the Grand Emporium as well. So it does look good here in one respect. Uh, we've got all those interesting windows on the back and those nice colours making the rear view uh, great because some of them are really bad, like the brick bank next to it, actually. I mean, what a cacophony of sections there. It really is quite ugly. I need to do something with that. Uh, but we can't see the front hmm, at all, or can we? So maybe we need to go to the second uh, rather first standing hole and uh, the doorway to the Lego room and see what we can see from there and hopefully when I've got my three directional sign on the front of this uh, you'll be able to see it from over there uh, but for those that are concerned I have relocated Mr Squirrel onto the top of Fast Food Corner so I think he looks quite good there it's a bit more peaceful for him uh, and I've added one of the adverts for Antonio's Pizza onto the edge of my mall railings so that's tied in better as well so let's move to the other standing holes yeah you can't really see it from here either that well uh you can see why i wanted the jazz club sign pointing in all directions uh the uh, tiles have been moved on to the side facing us now so we can at least read where it says jazz club I think that was an important change, but uh, where else is another modular going to go in a room that is as full as this one? Uh, we could swap something out technically, but I'm quite attached to all the ones we've already got in position on this run, uh, on the corner there, and on this run. They're quite integrated, most of them, so moving them wouldn't be that easy. Uh, anyway, it's good that we've got the uh, scenes that we have. It's good that we've got the perspective from the back, even if that's all it is. <laughs> I hope my uh, uh, improvements inspired you to do something similar to yours. Uh, but otherwise, let me know, as always, if you think you could do better. Well, I'm clearly going to have to start a crowdfunder for a bigger Lego room because I have officially run out of space for modulars. Uh, but turning the band around like this has made it a lot more interesting from the perspective of the second standing hole. They look really good. And that bass drum you can see from an absolute mile. And maybe they're even playing to all of the people in the fairground, which we really need to do a bit more work on. I agree, getting behind in my schedule. Uh, but yeah, that looks pretty good. The fact that we can't see the Duplo pizza at all from any angle is a bit uh, devastating, really. But yeah, if you've got any ideas for location better than this, then uh, I'd love to hear them. Though I can't swap the two sides of the road round and have deep modulars on that side, just partially because of the geometry of these 32 by 32 base plates linking up with the entire rest of the city. So uh, yeah, unless I had a 16 by 16 or some sort of roadworks, I don't know. Love to hear your ideas. Uh, and this space over here is taken with an idea that will be coming very soon. 
Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And if you want to send something to the channel, you can to the usual PO box address. Uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I'll be doing a brick haul. Uh, and then uh, next weekend, I think it's about time we did that tour. Now we've got this in position. Uh, I think we are well placed to give a thorough examination of our status in the city. Though I'm doing a pretty good job of showing you everything right now. <laughs> so until then, see you. Yeah, these guys are cool.